so in the the last time we were together, we saw what happened when we put a negation in front of a conditional statement. And when we put a negation in front of a conditional statement, it converts it into an and statement. Uh, and that was the equivalence we talked about. So now the what happens is, what happens when I put a negation in front of either an and statement or an or statement? So one of the originators of the field of symbolic logic and, and using it to test validity of arguments, which is what where we're going and we're going to be there in just a little while, uh, was a mathematician named De Morgan. And so these, these two laws are named after this particular person. And so it kind of functions as a sort of, not exactly, but kind of sort of a distributive property. So not exactly a distributive property, but it has kind of the, the feel of it. So if I have this negation out in front of parentheses and I have an and or an or, now remember, as we saw previously, this does not apply if there's a conditional statement inside the parentheses, only for a conjunction or a disjunction. So if you have a conjunction, here's what you do if you want to get rid of the parentheses. We say, okay, I'm going to take the negation, I'm going to apply it to P, and that's going to give me squiggly P. And then where this differs from a straightforward distributive property is now instead of an and statement, when I get rid of the parentheses, it becomes an or statement. Okay, we got to flip the connective between them. And then we apply the squiggly to the Q and we have squiggly Q. So we apply the negation to both terms like we would in arithmetic when we, when we distribute a negative, but you have to now flip the sign. Okay, and so the same thing applies for the disjunction. I'm going to distribute the squiggly, but instead of a disjunction, it's going to be made into a conjunction this time. So I'm going to have squiggly P, and this time instead of an or, it becomes an and statement squiggly Q. So just got to remember to flip that sign. So here's what I would like you to do. This is a nice warm-up exercise for us, kind of reviews where a bunch of places where we've been. I want you to show... Uh, I want you to show the second equivalence is true using the truth table. Show that squiggly P or Q is equivalent to squiggly P and squiggly Q. So as you're working, remind me, how can I tell when I'm using my truth table that two statements are equivalent? When they have the exact same last column. Yes, that's what that's what you were driving at right there. You got 75% of it out, so we'll give you credit for it. When you have the same exact sequence of trues and falses in that last column, those two things are equivalent, meaning you're communicating. If you're, if this was in language, which we're going to see this in a minute, you would be communicating the exact same thing uh, in either in either event. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to just get started with the truth tables. I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to, uh, to to nail this. So first, I'm going to do squiggly P or Q. So I'm going to start with a column for P or Q. 
And as I'm asking this question, I'm sure you're going to say the answer to yourself. An or statement is true when either of them are true. That is the basic truth table fact that we that we began this whole this whole unit with. And so P or Q, true or true is going to be a true result. True or false is going to be a true result. False or true is a true result. False or false is a false result. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the negation of that. So the negation, as I'm saying this again, you're probably thinking it, the negation just flips the value, okay? It just changes it. So instead of true, 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 false, we're going to have false, 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 true. All right. So so far, so good. I know it's been five days since I've seen you. We doing all right? All right. I'm going to put a little check mark under there because that's the first column that I'm going to compare. And now the next column, I need a squiggly P and a squiggly Q. So since I have negations involved, I'm going to do a quick column for each of those first. And if you already did these earlier, kind of getting everything ready, that's fine. It doesn't, doesn't matter what order you do these columns in. So squiggly P. So I'm negating the P column. So instead of true, true, false, false, it's going to be the reverse. False, false, true, true. Do the same thing with Q. Instead of true, false, true, false, I just make an opposite, false, true, false, true. And then the last thing is I'm going to connect them with a conjunction. And again, as I'm saying this, I'm hoping you're thinking, I hope this is becoming more and more second nature because I know logic is goofy in a lot of ways. Uh, so practice is really good. The conjunction is true only when both are true. That's the only time. So here goes my squigglies, false and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. And finally, true and true is true. Let me put a check mark. Are those two things equivalent? Yes, they got the exact same last comp. So congratulations, you just proved something. Okay, you demonstrated that that is always true no matter what. Yes, these two things are equivalent. Great job. So what we're going to do as we... As, as we just get used to using De Morgan's law and the, this equivalence, is we're just going to go through kind of what we were doing last time when we talked about the negation of the conditional, is we are going to look at these statements and we are going to use De Morgan's law to change them into something that means the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to do this first example, and then you're going to do the next one, and they're going to be very similar, and then I'll do another example and, and you'll finish. So here we go. It is not true that Atlanta and California are cities. Okay. All right, well, here we go. I'm going to define my simple statements. This has been our, uh, this has been our process. So I'm gonna say statement P is Atlanta is a city. And then I'm gonna say statement Q is California, which I'm abbreviating is a city. Anybody got any concerns about that? Remember, questions are always good and valued if you have one, so please ask them. So now let's write that symbolically. All right, this is we're, this is the wayback machine. This was the very first uh, the very first time we talked about this. When you see the words "it is not true," what does that communicate to you right away? You put a squiggly, and then what? Parentheses, yes. When you see it is not true or it is false that, those both mean the same thing. That means start off with a squiggly and some parentheses. And so then Atlanta and California are cities. So P and Q, we got that squiggly. Now, this is where I get to use my new friend De Morgan's law. So I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put an equivalence right there. And now I'm going to distribute. Okay, and you can look up at the top where we just define these relationships, okay? And so it's going to be squiggly P. I've got to change the and to an or, and then squiggly Q. And now we will write that in words. I'm going to I'm going to write it over here on the side. I don't want to squish things too much. I did not use my room very well on this particular problem. I promise I'll do better. So here we go. Squiggly P is Atlanta is not a city. Or, squiggly Q, California is not a city.
So both of those things have the same truth value. So if you go up to somebody and say, uh, you know, I read your paper and it is not true that Atlanta and California are cities. Okay, you're saying that 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 what they wrote down is not true, which we know because California is not a city. So you could have communicated that this that way. You you could say, and, and I know it seems a little more awkward, but Atlanta is not a city or California is not a city. That's one of the one of those two, but it has the same exact truth value. Okay, and that's what De Morgan's law tells us. So try that same thing, exercise six. Okay, take that statement, write it as symbols, and then um, and then change it using De Morgan's law. All right, so I've defined my two simple statements. Always remember, especially as we get to the next few problems, I didn't, I didn't want to overcomplicate these first couple of examples. But remember, always define your simple statements positive with no negation. You add the negation in symbolically later. So my statement P is Taylor Swift plays in the NBA. My statement Q is LeBron James plays in the NBA. So the given statement is it is not true that. Again, we see this. And again, that means I'm going to put a squiggly in some parentheses. And what am I putting in parentheses symbolically? P and Q. Yeah, Taylor Swift plays in the NBA. I know the way that this is written. The, 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 the book, when you go to do your homework, I would ordinarily write it as separate statements, but the book kind of combines sometimes. So I wanted you to get used to seeing that. Uh, I don't want you to ever feel like there's a mystery when you go to do your homework. So uh, P is Taylor Swift plays in the NBA and Q is LeBron James and they're connected with an and. So P and Q. Up to this point, anybody got a question, comment or concern? We do it all right. This is the new bit right here. We've done a whole bunch of this so far in this unit. The new bit is what is that equivalent to? So tell me, what is that equivalent to? Squiggly, uh, squiggly P or perfect. Yes. But this is basically the same problem we just did. You're just getting the chance to run through it so that it can lock into your brain. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to write it in words. So first squiggly P is Taylor Swift does not play in the NBA. And then, or LeBron James does not play. in the NBA. 
Both those statements, the original one that we were given, and then the one we just wrote down, have the exact same truth value to them. They are equivalent statements. Okay, so no matter what the component parts have, whether what their trues or falses are, that this is the same truth value as a whole for both of those things. Okay, so we're going to finish out. I'm going to do one more. You're going to do two more. What we're going to do, and the reason I have two examples, is you are we're going to use this in reverse, which I think is a, a little bit more uh, of of maybe maybe a, I don't know that I would say difficult, but I just want to make sure that we practice seeing it in the reverse. I know it's easier to distribute than to to go the reverse process. So example three, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use De Morgan's law to write a statement equivalent to this. You do not leave by five p.m or you arrive home on time. Well, help me out on this first one. Statement P, what should we make simple statement P say? You leave by 5 p.m., yes. Great. And then statement Q is what? You arrive home on time. Excellent work. So now we'll, we'll write that as symbols. So you do not leave by 5 p.m. That is what as a symbol? Squiggly P, that's where I put the negation back in. The word or, that's a disjunction. You arrive home on time, and you arrive home on time is just straightforward. That's Q. Now here's what we're going to do. We're using De Morgan's Law in reverse. This time, instead of quote unquote distributing, we are going to pull out the negation. That's how we're going to do this. So let me write a negation here and I'm gonna write some parentheses. And, and if you have trouble seeing this, ask me, I'll, I'll clarify this as much as I can. If I pull the negation out, instead of squiggly P, what am I gonna have in the parentheses? Just a plain old P, yes. Now De Morgan's law still says this is an or statement. So what? is the statement in the parentheses going to be? An and statement? Okay, now this is the one, if you're gonna have, uh, if you're gonna have a stumble anywhere on this first one, it probably is going to be here. I, I have Q right here. What's left when I take out the squiggly? What'd you say? If I just put Q here, let me put that, don't write this down just yet. If I just put Q here, what happens if I go back and use De Morgan's Law? I have a squiggly applied to the Q. Does that give me Q? No. So what should it be when I when I pull out this squiggly right here? Yeah, squiggly. Remember, two negatives make a positive. So now looking back this way, a squiggly, squiggly Q gives me positive Q. Does that make sense? I know it's a little bit tougher to see. That's why I've got two examples for you to work through just to make sure we solidify this a little more. But once you get that, that's the hard part to the problem right there, applying De Morgan's law. Now I'm going to finish this up. So just one more time, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't uh, exhaust you and ask you this again. When I have the squiggly in front of the parentheses, how do I start my statement out? Yeah, you can either say it is not true that or it is false that. Whatever whatever your flavor is. I'm just going to I'm going to say it is not true that. Statement P, you leave by 5 p.m. And squiggly Q, you do not arrive home on time. All right, well, give exercise seven a try. And remember, give yourself the freedom to make a mistake. Mistakes are opportunities to learn and ask questions. So there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Give it your best shot.
All right, so let's look at this. Let's give some feedback. Let me give you the opportunity to ask whatever questions you need to. So the statement we're looking at is the dog was not a bulldog and the dog was not a boxer. Okay, that dog is not a lot of things. So my statement P is the dog was a bulldog. Statement Q is the dog was a boxer. So that means the original statement, the dog was not a bulldog. That is squiggly P. And so conjunction. The dog was not a boxer, squiggly Q. Okay, now that's equivalent to. So De Morgan's Law, one side of De Morgan's Law has the parentheses. It has the negation outside. It's been extracted. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extract the negation. I have to write that down. I can't just, I just can't erase that. That, that has to be part. Otherwise, you're going to be writing down something that's not equivalent. You're going to do that accidentally. So that, that negation in these parentheses are a key part to this, okay? So now when I, when I extract that negation, what's left from the first term when I extract the negation? Plain old P. And then De Morgan's Law says instead of a conjunction, I'm going to have a disjunction. Instead of an and, I have an or. And then what about the squiggly Q? What, what becomes of that when I extract the negation? Q. And so every time you do this, when I look at this side where I've extracted the negation, if I then went and used De Morgan's law the way it was introduced, if I distribute that, okay, then I should get what I started with. But that negation has to be there because I have to have something to distribute. All right, at this point, I think writing in words is not the biggest of deals. That's the hard step to this problem. It's the new information. So I've got, it is not true that... The dog was a bulldog or the dog was a boxer. And I'm going to, I think, mimic what the book does because I think most of these problems you're going to be picking. So it is not true that the dog was a bulldog or, and I'm just going to say a boxer. That's kind of how we would speak it. We wouldn't say the dog was a bulldog or the dog was a boxer. That's a lot of extra words, but you're welcome to write those extra words. Just write either way, okay? So I don't, I don't care. When I grade your test, your tests are written. I can discern, and I'll give you credit for either of those two things. Okay. All right, one more problem, and we're done with this section. So if you have anything you need follow-up on, please uh, bring it to me or raise your hand. I will come to you. Exercise eight, same sort of thing, one more time. All right, so statement P is going to be the sun is shining. Statement Q, it is raining. So let's write symbolically the sun is not shining, but it is raining. So the sun is not shining is squiggly P. I just did this just to remind us, because I know we're getting close to the end of the unit. What connective is the word but? It's and, right? It's, this, it's just the conjunction, yes. So, and then it is raining is Q. 
So that is equivalent. Again, De Morgan's Law talks about what about my squiggly outside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extract that squiggly. What's left from the first term when I extract the squiggly from the squiggly P? Just P? Instead of an and statement, it becomes an or statement. And what's left from the Q when I extract the negation? Yes, yeah, squiggly Q. Yes, the, the negative of Q. And then, so the last time, it is false that, or it is not true that P, the sun is shining, or it is not raining. And there we go.